Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit ComlexFlashcards.com for complete Comlex prep resources. Let's review Otitis Media with Effusion. This is where you have persistent effusions um, which need to be examined monthly. And if they're present for at least three months, you must do hearing testing. So that's a key finding you want to remember for the boards. You have to do hearing testing in patients with acute uh, otitis media with effusion. And that's usually the result of some kind of an effusion, uh, possibly due to an infection. Understand also that the only documented treatment here is tympanostomy tubes, okay? So the treatment on here is not going to be a medication. You want to refer to ENT doctors if three to six months of bilateral effusion um, or longer with a unilateral effusion or earlier with any kind of a hearing loss. So referral is key and tympanostomy tubes are important in the treatment. It has been shown that the tube placement provide an improvement in the quality of life and most stay in for an average of 12 months, okay? And tube otoria means that there's an ear infection and it's treated with topical um, otic oxaflacin and ciprofloxacin with dexamethasone. So again, uh, if there's otoria, meaning uh, with an ear infection, then you want to treat it with the topical otic uh, ophloxacin or ciprofloxacin with dexamethasone. Some important complications of uh, otitis media and um, otitis media with effusions include acute mastoiditis. So technically all cases of uh, acute otitis media are accompanied by acute mastoiditis because of the associated inflammation of the mastoid air cells. But early there are no signs or symptoms of infection. Spread of infection to overlying periosteum is acute mastoiditis with periostitis. So that's the definition. Spread of the infection into the overlying periosteum resulting in periostitis. So you see then uh, inflammation in the postauricular area with displacement of the pinna. Okay, so you see inflammation of the postauricular area with displacement of the pinna. And whenever acute mastoiditis is suspected, CT is indicated. Okay, so you want to get CT. In, and it's the keywords here, post-auricular area are the keywords. Uh, the treatment is myringotomy um, or tympanocentesis and parenteral antibiotics. So that's the key. Organisms are mostly strep, pneumo, non typical H influenza, and pseudomonas aeruginosa. But in acute mastoiditis, infection has caused destruction of the bony trabeculum of the mastoid. And in this case, the above needs to be done um, that we mentioned, and you want to put in a tympanomastoid surgery. So if it's acute and the infection has really damaged the trabeculum of the mastoid, then surgery is recommended. Another complication that's going to occur is um, an acu acquired uh, cholesteoma. This is a cyst-like growth within the middle ear, and uh, it's lined by a keratinized squamous stratified epithelium, and um, it's contained desquamated epithelium and keratin. Also, most often it's a complication of chronic long-standing um, otitis media, and it expands progressively causing bone resorption, which can be life-threatening. An otoscopy is usually recommended, which shows a discrete white opacity protruding through the tympanic membrane. So you have a discrete white opacity protruding through the tympanic membrane along with cyst-like growth within the middle ear, and chronic long-standing OM, which can help you make the diagnosis of acquired cholesteoma. The next step in management is uh, ENT referral immediately and confirm for surgery. Thank you for listening.